Once again, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Munich Security Conference's YouTube channel. I'm Hadley Gamble, the senior anchor and international correspondent for CNBC, and I'm joined now by the NATO Secretary General. It's wonderful to have you on the program. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Hadley. I want to kick off by asking you to take a step back to the last mm. conversation that we had. It was back uh, in December, mm. and I asked you if, given um, the economic situation that Russia now faces, if they are really a significant threat. And your answer at that time was that they're an economic power that's in decline, mm. but they do still pose a threat. Where are we today, in your view? As what we have seen over the last uh, months uh, is uh, the biggest military buildup since the end of the Cold War, uh, with the largest concentration of forces, uh, and uh, and they have all the capabilities in place, uh, Russia, to launch an attack uh, on Ukraine with hardly any warning at all. They can afford to do all of this. Yeah, they have the places there. So, so no one is actually denying that that Russia has all these forces in place. Uh, the question is, will they launch an attack? Uh, of course, there's no certainty about that, but... Uh, the President of the United States yeah. seems certain, but you're well, not. Well, we have more... No, no, we as a NATO allies, the United States, all of the NATO allies, we have the same assessment uh, that it's a very high risk for uh, a, a Russian attack on uh, Ukraine. Uh, and that is partly because of the uh, military uh, build-up, the presence of Russian forces, but also the very threatening rhetoric, and also that we have seen attempts by Russia to stage a pretext to create the situation in Donbass or somewhere else uh, as the excuse uh, for uh, attacking uh, uh, Ukraine. We have seen that have false uh, accusations about genocide. We have seen a uh, very high increase in number of violations of the ceasefire in Donbass. And all of this, of course, adds to the uh, picture that uh, this is a real danger for a, uh, a Russian attack. You and I spoke about this the last time back in December. Mm. And then prior to that, I was in Moscow speaking to President Putin. That was back in October. And there was already a troop buildup, which had been happening all through the summer. Mm. Did we sleepwalk into this crisis? Well, we uh, warned the NATO allies and NATO, uh, we were very transparent and clear and vocal about this, uh, 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 so actually starting this summer. Uh, 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 telling them about this gradual, telling the world about the gradual uh, military build-up, and also sharing uh, with uh, the world, the public, that that uh, that uh, uh, what the indications and the intelligence we had then indicated that it would continue to roughly the level of forces they have today. So what has happened now was actually predicted uh, by our intelligence many much months like the situation with the pullout in Afghanistan. You predicted the problems. Yeah, but that's a very different thing, because that was us leaving uh, in a very difficult situation. This is actually predicting what, what Russia is planning to do. Again, we don't have certainty, but we see the facts. We see the build-up, we see the rhetoric, we, see, uh, we know the track record of Russia. They have used force against Ukraine before. So there is a real and increasing uh, danger for an attack on, uh, on Ukraine. At the same time, it's never too late uh, uh, for Russia to, uh, to step back, uh, to stop preparing for war, and to start uh, engaging in talks, diplomatic talks with NATO and NATO allies to find a, a political solution. If there were to be an invasion, what are the first things that you believe the West should be worried about beyond the actual incursion itself? Are we talking about cyber attacks? What are we talking about? Because no doubt President Putin is going to react to whatever Western sanctions are put in place. Well, it depends a bit what you mean. So my, my most serious concern is, 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 is casualties, is people being killed uh, in uh, Ukraine. Uh, this is a loss of life, which is uh, the most brutal uh, and immediate consequence of uh, a war of this scale that we can see be launched against Ukraine. Uh, uh, then what we will do from the NATO side is that we will make sure that uh, uh, Russia will uh, see that there are high costs uh, 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 that comes with such a aggressive ag aggression against the sovereign nation. These are uh, economic sanctions, diplomatic sanctions. Um, the European Union, NATO allies ha have been working very closely together over the last uh, months, weeks uh, to prepare that. Uh, and then of course we will also make sure that there is no room for misunderstanding about our readiness and capability to defend and protect all NATO allies. Ukraine is a, va a valuable partner. We support them 
for NATO allies like uh, uh, Poland, Romania, other countries uh, uh, in the whole of the alliance, we have a, a absolute and ironclad security guarantee that an attack on one ally will trigger a response from the whole alliance. But do you believe that there would be a threat to NATO allies? Well, I, uh, I believe that Russia understands that uh, NATO is the strongest military alliance in history, that we stand united, and, uh, and this is not only a commitment in words in our uh, uh, founding treaty, in Article 5 of the founding treaty, but also a commitment which is demonstrated every day uh, by the increased presence of NATO troops in the eastern part of the uh, alliance. We have already increased our presence with, in the air, uh, on land, at sea, uh, but we are also ready to reinforce uh, that presence uh, very quickly if uh, needed. The question, of course, is uh, particularly for the international community, is that if there are economic sanctions, no doubt President Putin will have some kind of response to that. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen in the past are cyber attacks. What would your take on that be? Because you're very familiar with trying to understand the mind meld of the Kremlin, because well, you've had to well, do well, it. Yeah, but of course, there's always a danger for uh, uh, cyber attacks, and we have seen cyber attacks also <coughs> before. Like uh, hitting the banking system. Uh, that has happened. We, there have been many allies reporting about cyber attacks, uh, most likely conducted by Russia. Uh, we have seen it against uh, economic institutions, against parliaments, uh, and we have seen efforts to try to meddle in domestic political processes. So, so NATO allies should be ready. Absolutely, but we, we are ready uh, and we have done a lot to strengthen our cyber uh, defenses, to share uh, information about uh, malign activities, uh, cyber activities, and also to, to, to share best, best practices when it comes to protect and defend our network. So cyber uh, is a new dimension of our security environment, which has been high on the NATO agenda for a long time. One of the questions I posed a little bit earlier today in the program uh, to the Chancellor of Germany, Olaf Scholz, was one about Germany itself and its readiness um, as a NATO ally. And there's a perception that Germany is the weakest link of NATO. <coughs> What's your take? Germany because it's political for them, internally, and of course with the energy situation and Nord Stream 2. Germany is a highly valued uh, NATO ally and they contribute to uh, NATO's collective defense in many different ways. Uh, they have actually over the last years increased defense spending significantly. Uh, they are investing in new modern capabilities and they have, uh, Germany is leading one of the battle groups in, uh, in the Baltic countries in Lithuania. They have recently decided, they are actually in the process of increasing, sending in more German troops uh, to Lithuania to, 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 to in a way, further strengthen our presence there. Uh, they are playing a key role in some of our naval operations. They are leading our presence in the Aegean Sea to help enforce the agreement between Turkey and, uh, and the EU on migration. Uh, they had, Germany is in Kosovo, uh, helped to stabilize the Western Balkans. So, so Germany is really doing a lot in this alliance. And, uh, and, and Germany, has, as Olaf Scholz, the Chancellor, has also made it clear that, of course, if there is an attack, they are also ready to impose sanctions. Yeah. So you don't think the criticism of Germany is fair? No, I think that what we see now is a very united NATO, well, that we stand together, uh, and if Russia wants to divide us, they actually uh, get the opposite, they get a more united NATO, and if Russia wants less NATO at its borders, they get the opposite, they get more NATO. So uh, uh, Germany is a part of this, uh, the biggest reinforcement uh, of NATO's collective defense since the end of Cold War has taken place over the last years and the last months. Uh, supported by Germany. Before I let you go, how do we, as the West and as NATO allies, prevent a crisis like this in future, in the sense that there's been a conversation surrounding Nord Stream 2 and whether or not giving uh, President Putin that ability to hold the West hostage via energy? Well, I think all NATO allies realize uh, uh, that, that we need to be uh, uh, less dependent on uh, energy from one source, uh, from uh, gas from Russia. And therefore, as uh, for instance uh, the President of the European Com Commission stated today, uh, the European Commission is working hard with all the member states to reduce dependence on uh, Russian gas, gas, partly to reduce emissions of greenhouse gas, uh, um, also of, 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 of CO2, but also to be less vulnerable uh, for any aggressive actions from Russia using gas as a, 
as a political she tool. She called out Gazprom specifically. Well, she said that what we have said, uh, what, what, what we have seen is, is that, that Russia has used gas uh, in this uh, um, situation to put pressure on uh, European countries and uh, European Union, Europe should be less dependent on uh, Russian gas. Do you believe that we're going to see sanctions on Gazprom? Well, I'm not going to the specific sanctions which are uh, discussed among NATO allies uh, and the European Union, but uh, we have made clear, or uh, allies have made clear, the European Union ha ha has made clear that there will be severe sanctions, unprecedented sanctions, if Russia once again uses force against uh, Ukraine. Were you surprised that President Zelensky made it to Munich? Well, that's given the time frames that we keep hearing yeah, from but, the United but that's, States. That, first of all, this is this is a judgment and a decision he has to make uh, in Munich. He ha will have the opportunity to meet with a lot of uh, decision makers, uh, also important for his country. Uh, he's going to meet with the U.S. Vice President uh, Kamala Harris, and many other uh, decision makers. So I think uh, it, it, that 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 is has value for him. Uh, and then, of course, it's his call, his decision whether to go or not. Mr. Secretary General, we appreciate you taking the time to speak to us and we really appreciate what you do. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much.